Hello Gator Scientist. Today we are going over Energy Quiz Week 2. What is energy? There is no easy way to say this. You need to know, no matter what, you have to know that energy is the ability to do work. It's one of those definitions that you just have to memorize. If you get to the end of the energy unit and you had no clue that energy means the ability to do work, then you just haven't done your part. It's a vocabulary word that you just must know the definition to. And understanding work toward the end of the unit and how to calculate it will make more sense to you of why that's energy. Question number two asked you which of the following are types of mechanical energy? The answer that's correct is potential energy and kinetic energy. And I've told my students to imagine mechanical as the mother. Mechanical starts with an M and mother starts with an M. And she had two twins. Her twins names were potential and kinetic. But those two twins were as different as ever. They had nothing in common. Potential was like a couch potato. And she sat on the couch all day and didn't want to get up. But her twin brother, kinetic, kinetic is like a kid who's energetic. Kinetic, kinetic is like a kid who's energetic. So she had two babies. Mechanical is the mother. And she had two babies, potential and kinetic. Potential was a couch potato. And kinetic, kinetic was a kid who's energetic. The next question said, what is the energy that's associated with the motion of the particles inside an object? Now, this got a lot of children confused. This was the number one missed question across the sixth grade. And I will explain to you why. The second that children saw motion, they were looking for something that made them think of kinetic. Now, kinetic wasn't even an answer choice. Potential was, and some kids picked chemical. And other kids picked electrical because they were thinking about maybe electrons. But hardly any of the children picked the correct answer, which was heat energy. Heat is the same thing as thermal energy. A student of mine found a trick. He said, Miss Massey, look, heat is in the word thermal. H-E-A-T. H-E-A-T. Heat is in thermal energy. Well, that's wonderful, and I'm so glad that he found that trick. But what we need to also remember is that heat energy is energy inside an object and the motion of the particles moving inside of the object. Do you remember whenever Mrs. Leslie made the fill-in-the-blank guide and then you saw the pictures of the beaker of water? And when you turned the heat all the way up, it made the molecules inside of the beaker of water go crazy. They were going so crazy that they even jumped right out of the beaker and turned into steam. So you add more heat energy and molecules move faster. So the particles move faster. And whenever we turn down the thermometer and put it in the middle, it turned back to regular water. And those particles were moving kind of fast, but not so fast. They weren't coming out of the object or definitely didn't jump out of the beaker. And then the colder that you made it, the lower the temperature went, it froze the ice inside the beaker. So that would be lack of heat. So heat energy is just how fast are those particles moving inside of that object? So remember, heat is inside the word thermal. When you put something in a thermos, it keeps it hot. When you wear thermal underwear, it keeps you warm in the winter. You guys are really lucky. You don't have to wear too many thermal underwear down in the south. 
but up north where I'm from, you'd put on a couple pair just to get to school. Brrr, very cold. Therm also is in the beginning of the word thermometer. Thermometers measure heat energy. Question number four says, which type of energy can only come from the sun and provides the earth with heat and light? It has to be solar energy. Just look, we've got a clue. The sun starts with an S and solar starts with an S. And the sun provides us with heat and light and that's solar energy. Number five said, which statement best summarizes the law of conservation of energy? Well, A wouldn't have been right because A talks about energy being lost. Energy's not lost. It never is. B talks about something flowing from heat flowing from a warm body to a cold body, and we have never learned anything about that yet. And then D talks about the fewer number of grams, the more energy it would have. And we haven't really learned anything about that either. But if you look at C and remember the chant, energy can neither be created nor destroyed. What? Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. What? Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It just changes form. Well, that's the only one that can make sense. It says, if energy disappears in one form, it must reappear in another form. Number six talks about the energy that can be produced in an electric circuit if a bell, a buzzer, a radio, or a TV is added to the circuit. Would it make, would all of these make light? A bell doesn't make light, a buzzer doesn't make light, a radio doesn't maybe make light unless it lights up on a screen, and a TV can have light, but since the other ones don't, light doesn't make sense for this. Heat energy might be in one or two of these, a bell, a buzzer, a radio, or a TV, but it's not in all of them. Sound energy can definitely come from a bell, from a buzzer that goes bzzz, a radio, or a TV, so that's a good choice. Chemical energy would only happen if it had batteries, food, batteries, food, and sugar would be included in that food. So that would not be a good choice. So sounds the only good answer choice. Number seven says the energy of a moving object. Now this is a moving object. This is the whole object moving, not the motion inside an object that's heat energy. This is talking about a whole object moving like a rolling bicycle. That is kinetic, kinetic like a kid who's energetic. It's moving, it's moving. Kinetic, kinetic, a kid who's energetic. Number eight, the energy stored in the particles of matter, like batteries and food, are examples of chemical energy. There's your hint, batteries and food. I say battery, you say chemical. Battery, chemical, battery, chemical. I say chemical, you say food. Chemical, food, chemical, food. This is how, something that I play with my students all the time. It seems kind of silly, but if you do name association and word association, and if I say the word chemical, you think the word battery and say it. I say chemical, you think battery. Chemical, chemical. I sure hope you just said battery twice. If I say chemical, you say food. Chemical, chemical. I hope you said food both times. I could even say chemical and you could think sugar, chemical, chemical, because sugar is produced by a plant and it's food for the plant. Hey, we even eat that sugar. Number nine says the energy that comes from the movement of electrically charged particles. I want you to look very carefully at the word electrically. What is in the word electrically? It has the word electrical. So if you're looking for electrical or electrically charged particles, you found the answer electrical inside electrically. So electrical energy is inside electrically charged particles. It has to do with the electrons moving through a wire. 
Question number 10 says, the energy that an object has because of motion and or position is mechanical energy. Who's the mother? Mechanical's the mother and she has two children. Do you remember who her children are? Mechanical's the mother and she has one child that's always in motion. What was the child's name that was always in motion? That's right, kinetic, kinetic, her kid that's energetic. And then what was her, stu her child's name that was always in position, showing position? That's right, the couch potato. So potential was her other child. So mechanics the, mechanical's the mother, and her children are kinetic and potential. And if you remember that kinetic, kinetic is a kid who's energetic, always in motion, and potential is always in position. Well, that's all. I hope that you take any of this information and apply it to next week's quiz.